Before starting out game dev, I had spent a lot of time searching up everything I could about it. And no matter what video I watched or article I'd read, without fail, everyone said start small. And that, don't worry, because for your first game, it's always going to suck. I beg to differ. I do not agree with this and never have. Every time I'd hear that, it made me feel a certain way. Society in general has a way of naturally separating the go-getters from those not willing to go the extra mile. Only through the fruits of your labor are you able to see your accomplishments. It's the ultimate representation of your hard work, consistency, and dedication coming into fruition. But don't take this the wrong way, because I'm not that naive to not see that there are reasons why people say, start small. Here's how it goes from my perspective. First, most people are not capable of taking on such a huge task of being a concept artist, story writer, 3D artist, animator, etc. All of what it takes to be a solo game dev. Number two, some are capable of doing this, but not willing. So this means that it is possible, which is why you see all those motivational YouTube videos always titled, why the 1% this or why the 2% that. You've seen them. In a nutshell, trying to do this is hard. Bottom line, and it is why the start small narrative is pushed so adamantly. A while ago, I was talking to an individual, a friend of the family. He's an artist and was interested in taking his artistic vision to the next level. So he heard that I've done some work in Blender. We had a conversation, and from my perspective, I thought we were going to be discussing what we learned from Blender and where we're at now. But in the midst of the conversation, he told me, and I quote, man, it was a lot. And had this look on his face as if he just gave up on it because of it being too overwhelming. At least that's what I got from it. The point I'm trying to make is that I didn't stop learning Blender until I got that understanding of the system and could confidently navigate the software with no tutorials. And this is what I mean about being willing to go the extra mile through all of it, through all of the downfalls and failures, because I did fail quite a bit. I actually lost all of my progress of like six months because I dropped my external hard drive. It didn't discourage me. On the contrary, it motivated me to do better. But like I said, everybody's not the same and everybody's motivations aren't the same. Some people will be discouraged. Some people will be encouraged by things. It just depends. And I don't want to take anything away from this man. It's what he was capable of doing. To be honest, that's what it boils down to. The willing, the unwilling, and the incapable. I want to be great though. I want to be a part of that 1%. And what I think annoyed me so much about people always saying start small was that it doesn't matter if you start small or big. You're going to learn regardless. Even with a small project, it'll take you a very long time to complete. So why not try and go big so that you can learn as much as possible along the way? This is not a far-fetched perspective either. The first video I dropped on this channel was called Creating My Passion Project, Identity Rebels Devlog 1, the beginning. In that video, I said, and I quote, I understand why they say that, start small. I'm new to this whole game dev thing. I'm solo, so I can't put too much on myself. And I don't want to get discouraged while being at it for so long, and not finishing, or just getting stuck. I get it, but for the life of me, I could not do that. Every time I tried to make something small, it kept on expanding. Everything I drew then brought to life in 3D. It felt like small projects I'd complete over and over again. So it felt like a sense of accomplishment throughout. And I've learned so much from the experiences from all that. So I believe that this is a subjective point of view depending on your personal level of knowledge, your willingness to never give up, and understanding of what it means to take breaks in order to manage burnout. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with starting small. I'm just saying that it's not the golden rule for beginning your game dev journey. If you're a gamer and are inspired by the games you've played throughout life, then go out there and do what you have to do to make that dream a reality. But there is one golden rule here though. The only way this will work is by not having any expectations whatsoever about whether or not your game will succeed. At this point, it's all about the journey. Make no mistake. This is where people potentially lose hope and motivation because of the expectations they have, how they think their game is flawless, and how everyone around them tell them only good things about their game. No, this is the root of the problem. If you don't internalize the journey, make it about growth, understanding and learning what you need to become a true solo game dev. Otherwise, it's all for nothing. Here's the silver lining in all of it, or the opposite. It's not about whether or not you should start small. I may be biased in this, Everyone is different. I really believe that the way I'm going about it is very beneficial to my growth and future of my game dev. Some of you probably think I'm crazy and can't even imagine how one is able to do all of this. And that's fine. At the end of the day, I want to be able to have an understanding of all this 
to the point that I have my production company up and running with all my projects under its umbrella. A CEO able to delegate where I see fit. And I think the only way to do this is to start big. I have a grand vision that I intend to see come into reality. This is my perspective and I'm pretty sure that it resonates with many of you. Thank you for listening. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Do you agree with me or not? Let me know. Until next time, I'll see you later. Peace.